Okay, this video is going to talk about the multiplication rule of probability for independent events. So um, first I want to look at the problem and see if we can identify why it's a multiplication rule of probability as opposed to another kind of probability. So we'll tackle the keywords first and then we'll explain what it means that these events are independent. All right, so the multiplication rule of probability. In this problem, it says the U.S. reported that 60.6% .6 of its female population are overweight or obese. Find the probability that three randomly selected females are all overweight or obese. So we want to underline and pay attention to this important phrase here, three randomly selected females. The fact that we're choosing more than one woman means that we're going to have to multiply the individual basic probabilities together in order to get the overall probability that all three of them are going to be obese or overweight. So the key phrase actually turns out to be the number of people selected. Anytime it's more than one, you're going to be looking at a scenario where you're going to have to use the multiplication rule in some facet or another. Now, after that, once you've identified this multiplication rule, we have to decide between two possibilities, whether the events are independent or dependent. So quickly, let's talk about that. Independent events are events that um, do not affect one another. So the outcome of one does not affect the outcome of the other. A classic example would be something like flipping a coin and rolling a die. If I roll a six-sided die and I'm looking for the probability that it turns out to be a three, and then say I flip a coin and I'm looking for the probability that it turns out to be a heads, if I wanted to figure out the probability of the joint event, the probability of getting a three and a heads on the coin, if I wanted to figure that out, um, I just multiply the probability that I get a three on the die times the probability I get a heads on the, die, on the coin. So for example, the probability that I get a three on a die is going to be one-sixth, right? spoke about this in another video earlier, that's because there's one three on a six-sided die out of six possible outcomes times the probability that I get heads when I flip the coin is going to be one half because there's one heads and two possibilities on the coin. And so the overall probability becomes one twelfth for the joint event of rolling a three and flipping a coin and getting a heads. But that's because this guy, this die here, does not affect the outcome of the coin toss, right? Or vice versa, the coin toss doesn't affect the outcome of the die roll. So in that case, I can just multiply them straight across. We're going to look at this problem and see that that's basically the same thing here as well. When I look at this probability, if I'm randomly selecting women from the population, the fact that one woman I select may be obese or overweight, you know, assuming that it's a random selection of the population and I'm not getting somebody in the same family, um, then there's no reason why one woman being overweight or obese should affect another woman who's randomly selected being overweight or obese. So those probabilities should remain constant, and that means that I can just multiply them straight across the probability the first woman is obese times the probability the second woman is obese times the probability the third woman is obese. All right, so let's work this problem out with that assumption that the events are independent, and we'll look at another example later in another video that describes what you do when it's a dependent scenario. Okay, so in this case, what we want to do for all multiplication rule probabilities is, like always, you want to write a probability statement. So here we're looking for the probability that three women are obese. So three women of the three that are selected are obese. Okay, so at that point we write a statement. And again, I see that I'm selecting three women in the study or the problem. So I'm going to draw three spaces three spaces that are going to represent placeholders for the probability that I'm looking to calculate, right? So I want to make sure that when I look at this three, it tells me two things. The first thing it tells me is that I'm dealing with the multiplication rule of probability. The second thing it tells me is that that's how many spaces I have to create in order to put in the probabilities. You will be making a terrible mistake if you use a three in a number somewhere in this fraction. Like, don't try to put a three down here because you see a three there. That's a common error that students make. They try to use this number as part of the probability. But that's not its role, right? Its role is to tell us how many basic probabilities we will have multiplied together. It also tells us that it's a multiplication rule. But it's not to be used in any other way. If there should be a three in this problem later on, it's not because of that three. It would have to come from somewhere else. In fact, there won't be any other threes in this problem. So that three is going to tell us to draw three spaces. We'll multiply between those spaces. And then what we have to put in these spaces is the individual probabilities, right? So what I'm going to think about is what do these spaces represent? This first space is going to represent the probability that the first woman selected is overweight or obese, right? That's what that fraction represents. So I need to put the probability that the first woman selected is going to be in that category of being overweight or obese. Well, we're told here that 60.6% .6 
of the female population is in that category. So I'm going to put that in here as a decimal. Remember, you just move the decimal point over two places, and you end up with 0 0.606 as the probability the first woman I select is obese or overweight. Now, this second fraction, what does that represent? Well, that second fraction is going to be a probability that the second woman is overweight or obese, and that's what that's supposed to represent. Again, we'll assume that since that's the overall rate of obesity or overweightness in the population of females in the United States, that the probability I grab a woman the next time I go and grab someone is going to be 60.6% as well, and then so on and so forth. Of course, the last fraction will be what? The probability that the third woman that I grab is overweight, and that'll be 0 0.606. And finally, the solution then for the problem is to multiply all three numbers together that gives you the final answer. So let's do that in my calculator to see what I get. So 0.606 to the third power, and we end up with the final result of 0.223, or about 22.3%. Okay. So that's the introduction to the basic idea of the multiplication rule of probability when the events are independent.